Hello there, lovely people. It's Alex from Nintendo Life here, and today we're reviewing for you Monster Hunter Stories 2 Wings of Ruin on the Nintendo Switch. This review was originally written by the venerable Tom Whitehead and has been adapted for video by me. But anyway, that's more than enough waffling. Let's dive right into things. <laughs> Monster Hunter is a series with a long-standing tradition of being impenetrable to casual first-time players, with systems layered upon systems and tricky combat. In the mainline series, Monster Hunter World provided a multi-platform mainstream breakthrough, whilst on Switch the recent Monster Hunter Rise followed that lead in applying copious quality-of-life improvements and at times aggressively streamlining to make the experience more palatable for a wider audience. That being said, the IP's broad universe and the intricacies of its monsters are still vitally important factors and no genre is better suited to making sense of a complex world than a traditional RPG. Monster Hunter Stories 2 Wings of Ruin may be a sequel, but it's worth saying right away that you don't need to have played the spin-off's debut in order to jump into this new release. I mean, Tom Haddon and nor had I really, apart from a very brief preview session, despite sharing a borderline obsession with the main games. There are some returning characters along with some assorted nods and winks that will no doubt raise a smile for those that fought through the 3DS epic, but nevertheless Capcom takes a generational approach of storytelling, and it is certainly a standalone game. Playing Wings of Ruin with a lot of background knowledge of the main games isn't necessary either, but it helped us recognize that this could be another welcome gateway for newcomers. Though some settings, monsters, and general environs remind us more of the last generation of Nintendo-centric Monster Hunter games on 3DS and Indeed World, this is a title that opens up an understanding of how monsters have ticks and behaviors, and introduces all the familiar items and their effects. Although knowing monsters from first-hand battles in past games can help with initial encounters, the system and tutorials on hand here make the game accessible to pretty much any player. As an RPG, Wings of Ruin isn't shy about simply tagging along with decades-old genre tropes and methods. You've got forests, ice areas, a desert, uh, you get the idea. You visit a village or town and to earn trust, you set off completing missions to prove yourself to be the best you can possibly be. It's almost always the same. It's this monsters causing problems, deal with it for us, by which they mean kill it. So yes, arguably it's a bit of a grind, but games like this are designed to be slowly digested over a number of weeks, and in that context it works well. However, the particularly intriguing aspects of Monster Hunter X RPG come in the combat and party building. You are a rider, part of a group of rather charming folk that opt to raise, befriend, and team up with monsters rather than hunt them. Yes, it's a bit Pokemon to a limited degree, with the uh, questionable practice of stealing eggs from nests, but let's not think too much about that now, it's a video game. But as a playthrough develops, there's a staggering amount of depth to the setup. Each monster has a preferred type that feeds into a rock, paper, scissors combat system, and then they have varied special moves, abilities, and buffs, you know, usual sort of thing. You could absolutely bury yourself in the stats, especially when you have the ability to channel abilities between monsters, but the game is also generous enough that you can pay minimal attention and just about get away with it. The setup is clever and you earn ways to expand your roster of monsters and even send them off on expeditions so that they can level up outside your party. Particularly later on in the story, you find powerful monsters that you want to use but are 20 plus levels lower than desired, so sending them off on 20 to 30 minute jaunts to level up while you continue to save the world is a smart design. This is a game that encourages you to dive into the detail and build the dream party, but it doesn't judge you too much if you instead just opt to stick to your old favorites, which... I personally have to say, I'm a little bit guilty of. I love Burlap. Then there's your Rider, a charming individual that can buy, forge, and upgrade a dizzying array of armor and weapons derived from the monsters you've faced. As always, the Monster Hunter fashion is genuinely fabulous, and we had family members react with amusement to seeing our character in a different outfit pretty much every time they watched us play. There's depth to admire again, as you carry three weapons and conveniently all the varieties fall into three delicious categories, namely slashing, piercing, and blunt, 
equipment that add yet another wrinkle to the combat. Forging armor and weapons with your preferred moves and buffs is genuinely fun, and then you ditch them for something snazzier within a few hours. That part of the Monster Hunter life is very brilliantly and very accurately recreated here. As mentioned previously, the combat itself incorporates a rock-paper-scissors format as you try to second-guess opposing monsters' moves to successfully counteract them. When you know a monster's patterns, you have all the tools to win well, as you can determine your accompanying monsters' next move or swap them out for a different type. There's the option to target specific parts, and when you trigger enough combinations, you even build up the option to ride your monster for a powerful special, healing you both in the process. As enemies become tougher, you also learn how to use various items such as bombs and traps as well, so it's kept interesting. Despite the notable positives, it's not quite a clean kill with the combat, despite solid construction and clever variety. For one thing, later in the game, battles can drag on for 20 turns or more, even when you're doing well in heading for an S rank. If you're working through a dungeon and you're getting snarled up in regular fights, it can feel a little long-winded. We spent a lot of time trying to just sort of meander around enemies as a result, and thankfully they are visible on the field, so that's entirely possible. You can also speed up battles, which helps a little, and if you're over-leveled in an area, you can also quickly resolve a battle for an instant win. AI buddies are also another small complaint. I mean, they can be very useful at times, but occasionally a little bit dim in their moves. They don't intuitively target the same monster parts as you, and will use a heal at sometimes very inopportune moments. In the grand scheme of things though, these are relatively small complaints, so don't like dwell on them or anything. When it comes to equipment, party building, and combat, the mechanics in place are strong and, thankfully, clearly introduced. There's far too much depth to go into fully in the space of a review, but suffice to say Stories 2 does an excellent job of keeping things nice and varied. Out of necessity, a lot of mechanics and details are introduced slowly, with with clear guides to help you find your way, which is nice. It's carefully put together so that it's easy to grasp, but the victim of this is the story progression early on, another genre trope that is absolutely inescapable here. There are long stretches of busy work where you may spend half a dozen hours on quests that achieve nothing of note, but introduce useful mechanics. That's the nature of RPGs, we know, but we would have preferred some slicker storytelling in the early stretch in particular. The story itself is quite simple, but enjoyable, all told, and it's certainly boosted by the lead protagonist and the utterly charming relationship they have with their monsties, and Ratha in particular. It feels like a while before the plot truly lifts off, but the payoff is effective because of the lead-up and excellent cutscene work. They mostly run in-engine, and the animation and direction of these scenes is just terrific. What you will notice in cutscenes are performance dips, and you're going to be seeing a fair bit of that during gameplay as well. I mean, you're watching the video version, so you've probably seen it already. There's no getting around the fact that this title is not particularly well optimized for Switch, which is disappointing considering the stellar work that went into Rise. I mean, very different games, but you know, it really feels like this was primarily developed for PC, where it's getting a release on the same day and then squeezed onto Nintendo's little hybrid. The frame rate even appears bizarrely to be unlocked, though it only nudges above 30 frames per second very rarely when indoors and very little on screen, but it's weirdly jarring. Even if you don't worry too much about performance, especially in large scale RPG where there's no real time combat, it's still noticeable. It can vary wildly depending on the location and the time of day. I mean, we've seen an area be smooth-ish at daytime and a juddery disappointment at sunset. And there's a forest area early on that downright runs poorly, especially in portable mode. It's not enough to stop you playing, but it is nevertheless hard to completely overlook in the worst affected areas. That's a bit of a pity, especially as the art style is a brightly coloured pleasure, with copious voice acting and beautiful music elevating the storytelling to a lovely degree. Intriguingly, an effort has been made to boost both story progression and no doubt post-game activity via multiplayer, which I'm sure I don't need to say is a big strength of the main series and it's nice to see it getting a chance in the spin-off. Only unlocked after a decent number of hours and progress, you either go into battles against others or embark upon co-op quests, and the latter is given a lot more focus. The environments are similar to dens that you'll find in the story, with the option to team up with assorted players online or use room IDs. Whilst you can probably tell that we did play this and we did give it a go, we weren't able to test it really extensively.
extensively for review, but as a means of teaming up with friends and boosting monster collections and resources, it's a fun idea that could add even more longevity. Monster Hunter Stories 2 Wings of Ruin deserves to find a sizable audience. It's full of charm and boasts depth that can immerse the committed or be dabbled with by those eager to just simply experience the story. As a blend of Monster Hunter with a traditional RPG approach, it's an accomplished effort and offers the sort of meaty experience that'll keep most players busy for weeks. Switch owners will need to tolerate some disappointing performance, unfortunately, but the overall experience shines nonetheless. It's a game of bright colors and wholehearted optimism, and it's very welcome indeed. You've reached the end of the review, and that means it's time for my personal thoughts. Ooh. Yeah, I, I really enjoy this game, absolutely. I think Tom hit all the major points absolutely on the head perfectly. I would say that, I don't know whether it's just because I'm not like mega, mega RPG kind of man, but I did feel it got a little bit grindy, I think maybe a bit sooner than Tom did. So that's potentially something to bear in mind, but maybe it's just me. That's what this little bit of section at the end is for. I mentioned it in the preview, but I did find that some of the characters <laughs> were really irritating. <laughs> And that's just a personal thing. Like, I understand this is meant for a broad demographic, so that includes children. But yeah, it's it's Navidu. It's Navidu! It's always bloody Navidu! He does my head in. He's just so positive and happy and energetic all the time. It's sickening. But thankfully, it doesn't bog down the experience for me. I just, I, I have great fun with this game. And I keep going back to it, which is handy because <laughs> as far as I can tell, it is chuffing huge, like absolutely enormous. Uh, you will spend quite a long time in the same area and it'll take a while to progress here and there. But overall, it's it's by no means like awful, like you don't like hang around for, you know, 50 hours in the same area or anything like that. But if you're expecting like a, a thrifty sort of move and like quick and rapid pacing, you're sure as hell not going to get it here. It's great fun. It's really engrossing. The combat system is brilliant. I've got an Aptonoth called Sausage. That should be enough to convince you.